This sneaky low pressure system isn't sneaking under my radar as it is up next in the weather pattern and moving into the central United States this weekend, bringing the chance for severe weather to the plains Saturday. Other areas will probably be impacted as we head into early next week. I've got an update on the upcoming weather and that includes a look at who could see a disrupted solar eclipse viewing. All that right here. Thanks so much for joining me here at One Nation Weather. Don't forget to check out the Weather Bowl link below. As always, if you want a free trial to the maps that I often use in the forecast, and please hit that subscribe button if you find value in this video and want more forecasts just like this. Now, let's take a look at the satellite imagery um, as of our Wednesday, April 3rd here in the evening. Looking back at the day of satellite, you can see that we've got a storm system in the Great Lakes region, a cold front along the East Coast. That's what's been bringing all of our severe weather that's moved out of the Midwest into the Ohio Valley, even impacted parts of the Southeast and Mid-Atlantic over the last few days. We've also had some snow and gusty winds in the northern end of the storm, and really a lot of areas have seen gusty winds. Good news is that this storm is wrapping up soon, um, but we've still got a little bit of it left as we go into Thursday, and let's play this out and kind of get into the future pattern as well. You can see as we go towards Thursday around 7, 8 a.m., still some snow over upstate New York, and particularly the northeastern corner of the state. Then as we go into parts of Vermont, New Hampshire, as well as a lot of southern and central Maine, we're going to be getting some heavy snow there. At least some rain and maybe snow mixing to find your place on the map here and see if you're going to be looking at some snow or rain. It's going to be a close call over a lot of the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes region as we go towards Thursday morning there. You can also see that we're going to have some decent snowfall, especially in the Oregon Mountains, as well as some light um, rainfall in some of the lower elevations. And that's going to continue into our early Friday, along with the snowfall and rain mix in some areas here of parts of the Northeast. If you live in the Northeastern part of New York, through a lot of Vermont, New Hampshire, and into Maine, especially with high elevation, you'll probably pick up a foot, maybe do a foot and a half of snowfall. We'll see similar deals here in the parts of the Sierra Range, parts of Nevada as well as high elevations of Oregon and into Idaho as we head through the next couple of days as we've got a low pressure system there. And what we're really seeing with this upcoming pattern, now this isn't an omega block. This might look like an omega block high pressure to those of you who are real weather nerds and know what that is. But overall what we've got is at least some ridging over the central United States as we go towards Friday afternoon. And essentially what that means is we're warming up a little bit above average over places like Texas, Oklahoma, all the way up to the Dakotas. Meanwhile, though, it's cooler in both corners of the United States. This is not an omega block, though because we don't really have an actual high pressure system necessarily in the central U.S. What we do have, though, is we go towards Saturday in the morning, some snow in the west and some of the higher elevations of the Rockies especially. Saturday, as the day goes on, probably some severe weather over parts of um, Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, maybe down into Texas. You can see that developing here as we've got this trough ejection, and really it's a neutral or negatively tilted trough. We'll kind of dive a little deeper into what that means here in a minute, but it certainly means that we could be seeing some showers and storms along a dry line here through the central and eastern parts of those states I just mentioned there as we head towards the late day and uh, even into the evening hours of our Saturday. Going into early Sunday, we'll continue to watch that low spinning, probably somewhere over Nebraska or South Dakota, bringing some heavy snow on the back end, maybe a little bit of shower and storm coverage Sunday morning over parts of the Midwest. As we go through the day Sunday, it's pretty uncertain as to where severe weather might be. Probably still some sort of cold front moving into the Mississippi Valley and the Midwest, though, so we'll have to continue to watch showers and storms through those zones. Also, snowfall back on over there into parts of Wyoming and Montana. Still a little bit lingering back there as far west as the Cascades as well. By the time we head in towards the Monday time frame, yeah, the all-important eclipse viewing in the middle to back half of the afternoon Monday, looking like some showers and even high elevation snow showers there in the Mountain West and into parts of the North Central. We've We've also got some rain down there over the south central United States, and in between that, we might still have some cloud cover. We'll break down your exact eclipse um, viewing um, forecast as of now here in just a second, but this is just your pattern overview that we're looking at, and that pattern overview shows the potential return of more severe weather Monday going into Tuesday and Wednesday of next week as that could shade off from the south central and eventually towards the northeast. So we've got a very active pattern ahead, and uh, looking at the jet stream really helps us dive deeper into what is causing this. Now, this is your mid-level jet stream. Um, as you can see, as we head towards, say, Thursday at 5 a.m., this is as we go just over the next 12 to 24 hours from when I film this, we've got a couple of different pieces of trough, one directly out of the polar jet stream here, supporting that upper level low over the Great Lakes. We've also got more of a subtropical jet stream piece that is making its way down here through parts of Florida. Those combining off the East Coast, that's what's bringing the cooler air there. We've got that next trough moving into the West as early as Thursday going into Friday morning here. And you can see that moving into the four corners as the day goes on on Friday. And again, here's that little quote unquote omega block looking pattern that is not an omega block, by the way, because again, this isn't really a real high pressure system over the central United States. We're not in the summer, um, but you 
can certainly see how we are going to get warming between that cool down in the east and the one in the west of course a little warmer than average as we head into this weekend over the central u.s and of course this negatively tilted trough that you can see really making its way from new mexico curling all the way on up there towards montana which is basically meaning that this trough is tilted more vertically than horizontally that's what's going to help support our severe weather and one thing that we look at in addition to the winds in the atmosphere which look to be favorable for severe weather it's these dew points and once you get into the 50s especially into the 60s you're getting into that favorable environment for severe storms storm prediction center really outlining most of these zones that i've got circled here in the potential for at least an increase of your weather risk already as we head towards saturday afternoon it looks like we're going to have a dry line with very low dew points pushing in from the west meeting up with these high dew points and at least the mid 50s into the low 60s here out ahead of that approaching cold front and dry line it looks like that'll be enough to spark some severe storms we'll see how that can continue um, eastward into parts of the mississippi valley as we head towards sunday now my ONW severe scale goes from zero to seven one is low certainty but a few severe storms appearing possible two and three that's when you're starting to get into an isolated to scattered severe risk maybe all hazards occurring four and five is when you're starting to head on up into where you're getting significant severe weather in more widespread fashion with maybe even an outbreak potential six and seven i rarely use and didn't even use that for our most recent intense event i'm going with a three of seven here as we head towards saturday over parts of oklahoma kansas and into parts of nebraska notice this really lines up with what the storm prediction center is going with here over the central plains as we head towards saturday looks like a high shear low instability environment for saturday late day and into the night but i do think all hazards will still be possible that could continue into Sunday, but we're very uncertain as to where that might be. So if you live anywhere from parts of western Indiana, um, in southern Minnesota, Iowa, parts of Illinois, all the way back down here closer to the Gulf Coast and the Arklatex, at least be on a little bit of alert, I think, for changes in the forecasts as I'm introducing that broad one of seven. Um, on my scale because of the high uncertainty there um, and not really knowing where to exactly highlight and pinpoint for severe weather. Looks like severe weather will be back um, with a, with intensity potential as we head back towards Monday, April 8th. This is another 15% increase of your weather risk within 25 miles of a point here in the Dallas suburbs and into parts of southern Oklahoma. Looking like we'll really need to be on high alert as we head into early next week, right as that eclipse is going to be occurring. One last thing I want to point out in the upcoming pattern as we head towards Friday, um, I um, mean, it's Thursday going into early Friday here. Wind gusts are going to be pretty intense over parts of Nevada, Utah, Arizona. Always check weather.gov for your latest weather alerts. You can see those move into parts of the Rockies, the Central Plains for late Friday going into Saturday. Um, it is going to be really windy. So again, always check up with weather.gov for your latest wind alerts and other weather information. One thing that I do want to take a look at now is your probability of 50% cloud cover Monday afternoon. According to ensembles, this is a group of models showing us that, yeah, there's a high probability of more than half of the sky being covered in clouds over a lot of the north central United States, the western U.S., um, for viewing this solar eclipse on Monday. Again, this is that path of totality that I'm overall draw drawing out there with that line on your screen. That's just an overall estimate. And yes, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi... European model ensembles, which means there's a collection of models going into this and averaging out, saying there's an 80 to 100 percent chance that your sky is at least partly to mostly cloudy, meaning that your eclipse viewing chances might be fairly low in those zones. Um, and we're seeing this on other trends as well. So if you want to have your best chance of going to the and seeing this eclipse in its totality, might not be great over the Great Lakes with maybe cirrus clouds, especially approaching out ahead of that system that's going to be sitting on over the Upper Midwest. Best bet, maybe if you can find a little bit of this hole that the European ensembles are showing there with only 10 to 20% chance of partly cloudy skies to mostly cloudy skies there into parts of Illinois and Indiana, that would be where it would actually be closer to being mostly sunny, according to that. And having, a, of course, a better chance of seeing the eclipse would be there. Now, looking at that same probability for 50% cloud cover, according to your GFS ensembles, notice it does not show Illinois and Indiana in the clear, but at least a 50-50 shot of seeing better than partly cloudy skies. Meanwhile, though, a lot of other areas still being cloudy. So unfortunately, many spots might have trouble viewing this upcoming eclipse. Um, and so stay tuned for updates and, of course, subscribe to the channel. I'll keep you updated. Hopefully, we'll have a upcoming live stream where we can discuss what your weather might be on the eclipse as well. Anyway, looking at daily highs and lows Thursday morning, lots of frosts and freezes cover sensitive vegetation, especially in the east and southeast if you live in areas that have already kind of gotten in the growing season here by Thursday morning. Really cold over a lot of the U.S., even on the way down towards the Gulf Coast. By the time we go towards Thursday in the afternoon, look at this. We've got these record warm highs in the parts of Montana, eastern Wyoming, out ahead of our next storm system. Again, this is that omega block that's not one, right? Moving into the central United States, especially as we head to end this weekend 
taken into the weekend with plenty of 70s to even go around um, into places like Denver and surrounding areas. The southern quarter of the U.S., in fact, South Carolina, um, cooler than some parts of Wyoming um, as we head towards Thursday as we go towards Friday morning. Look at this. Most areas, unless you're closer to the Gulf Coast, getting down into that frost and freeze category. Friday afternoon, warmth over a lot of the south central United States, plenty of 70s and 80s through Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, the eastern um, flank of the Rockies there and, and coming on out there into the plains. As we go towards Saturday in the morning, plenty of 50s and 60s here. And remember, this is getting ready for that next system here over the central plains. Meanwhile, we've got plenty of 20s and 30s in the Great Lakes, even cooler there in some of the high elevations of the Mountain West by the time we go towards Saturday afternoon. Here we go. That dry line is going to form Saturday afternoon. Severe storms in parts of Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, North Texas. And yeah, we will we'll be in the 70s over a lot of this region for temperatures on Saturday afternoon. Sunday afternoon looking like lots of 70s continuing here, especially into the mid and lower Mississippi Valley where we could maybe again still see that severe weather potential lingering. A lot of the south and eastern um, quadrant of the United States very warm as we head towards Sunday afternoon. And of course, find your location on this map and use the key at the bottom if I'm not directly mentioning you. Certainly looks like as we head into early next week a warming trend will continue over a lot of the country according to the national digital forecast database that continues into tuesday as well with warmth in 50s and 60s going as far north as the great lakes and new york um, please hit the subscribe button if you want more weather forecast updates i'm hoping to do a thursday live stream up ahead here um at maybe say eight or nine o'clock eastern so that'll be seven or eight central time um, on your thursday so if you want to um, stay tuned for that or any future videos hit that notification bell that's it for this video everyone one Nation Weather.